Hi, I'm Ben Giddy Baker, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble our deluxe fretting miter box kit. Let's get started. Begin by laying out all of the parts of your kit on a stable work surface. You should have two large base pieces with a third set of smaller top base pieces, six side pieces, two top braces, and 36 small flat Phillips head screws. If you are using a manual screwdriver, a hand screwdriver to assemble your kit, you can take some candle wax or crayon wax and rub it on the threads of each screw before inserting it to help get the screw be seated into place. We recommend, if at all possible, using a power screwdriver. Also, if you're using a hand screwdriver, uh, you can take a larger head Phillips screwdriver and use it to bore out the countersinking rings on each of the screw holes to help the screw head get seated into place. To start assembling your kit, take the bottom base piece that looks like this with the countersinking rings facing downward and then take the middle piece of the base and place it over. Remember that the countersinking ring should be on the bottom base plate facing downwards. Next, begin assembling your side pieces. The side pieces with the countersinking rings should be in the outermost slots facing outwards and should fairly easily tab down into place. Next, place your middle pieces that have no tabs on the bottom. And then finally, the inside pieces. The only difference between these outer pieces and the inside pieces are that the inside pieces have no countersinking rings. The pieces should fit snugly, but slip fairly easily into place. Try to make sure that your miter slot is lined up, and then take your two top pieces that have the branding text and countersinking rings around the holes and slide them into place like so. Making sure the countersinking rings are facing up and that on all three layers of the base that this hanging hole that you can use to hang the miter on a nail once it's finished, make sure those line up. Now we can begin inserting the screws into the holes through the base. Be sure to get the screw heads at least flush or ideally countersunk slightly beneath the surface of the wood inside the miter channel. Next, you can begin inserting the screws into the side panels. Make sure the side panel pieces are lined up as neatly as possible before proceeding. Hold the pieces together while inserting the screw to get a nice tight join. Once the top side panel screws are inserted, we need to pull the side panels back out of the base so that the bottom screws can be put in. You may need to wiggle pieces a little bit and work them back and forth and able to get them out. You may need to work the pieces back and forth a little bit while pulling on them in order to get them out. They will be snug, but they will come out with a little bit of trial. Once you have the side pieces removed, you can put in the final four screws here on these lower holes. It is very important that these screw heads be at 
flush or ideally slightly countersunk beneath the surface of the wood to get these panels back in. Once all of the screws are in place, you can get these side panels back into the base. You may need to give it some taps to get it to seat back in fully. To be sure it's seated fully, turn it over and look at the bottoms of the tab. Next, turn the piece over and put in the four screws here on the bottom of the base plate. Make sure that these tabs are fully seated to make sure the side panels are firmly in place. These screws will join the side panels to the base. Make sure these screws are slightly countersunk so that the miter box will sit nicely on a flat work surface. Finally, take the two top brace pieces and work them into place over the tabs on the top sides of the miter box. You might have to wiggle them around a little bit to get them seated in place, but once in place, put in the final eight screws. Your deluxe miter box is now complete. Take your fretting saw and run it down through the slot. For this first time, you may need to saw back and forth a little bit to remove any roughness. Now I will show you how to use your deluxe fretting miter box kit. This miter box is set up for cutting a perfectly deep fret slot in a three quarter inch thick piece of wood used for a cigar box guitar neck. To make use of it, slide the neck into the miter channel, line it up on your fret marker, bring the saw down in. Now ideally, you'll want to clamp your neck in place while sawing. There is a little bit of extra space in there. Uh, we include it if the neck is a little bit wider than one and a half inch. So you definitely want to try to clamp it down in this case, I'm not going to, I'm just going to hold it. So I've lined it up on my fret slot, and now I begin sawing. The top ridge of the saw will go down and touch the, mit the tops of the miter box guides here. And that's the automatic depth stop. So that what you end up with is a fret slot of perfect depth for standard fret wire in your on your cigar box guitar neck. Now again, this is set up by default for three quarter inch thick wood. If your neck is a little thicker or a little thinner, you may need to use a shim or carefully eyeball how deep your slot is. To use this miter box with a quarter inch fretboard, you will need the spacer block, the spacer shim block that was included with the kit. You slide that into place, then your fretboard, Ideally clamping it down again to a work surface. And because that spacer block is in there, but because that spacer block was in there, we now have a fret slot in our fretboard that is a perfect depth for standard fret wire. And that is how you use the CB Giddy Deluxe Fretting Miter Box Kit. Keep in mind, this miter box is set up to work with the fret saw that we sell at cbgiddy.com. If you have another saw, it probably won't work with these automatic depth stops, and you'll have to find another way to judge your fret slot depth. Thank you for watching. You now know how to assemble your CB Giddy Deluxe Fretting Miter Box Kit. Thank you.